Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to World of Warcraft Legion, and do not adjust your eyes. Swindle Gear is standing on thin air, along with Smee. Um, I'm doing a little bit of parkour here, I guess you could call it. I'm um, using the rogue grappling hook. We're somewhere we're probably not supposed to be. And that is, oh, the roofs of Dalaran. Specifically the, uh, <laughs> the Guardian Citadel, or whatever. I'm sure Cadgar loves that. But we need to decide what we're going to do today. We're here with the new um, ordained Shadow Blade of the Uncrowned because we finished the majority of the Rogue campaign. And now we need to determine what we're going to do from here. We've got Light's Heart down in the Hole of Shadows that we need to talk to. Um, but we also have two dungeons that we need to complete. One's the Assault on Violet Hold. The other one is Dark Heart Thicket to confront the Shade of Xavius. So I'd like to go ahead and get some of these dungeons out of the way. So I am queued up right now for the Assault on Violet Hold. And I'm really hoping that we're able to get a group for it. Can I actually get up there? Whee! Yes, indeed. I don't know how high I can make it up this thing. I think this is probably the highest that we can go. But I'm going to go ahead and continue my uh, building climbing expedition off camera. And I'll see you guys inside Violet Hold so we can start getting these knocked out. So, uh, hi. How's it? How you doing? Swindle's uh, sense of balance is amazing, but this is actually the highest I've ever gotten <laughs> trying to climb up this tower. Let's see if we can actually keep on going. Can we make it to the very top? Target not in line of sight. Let's try right over here. Woo! Hey, Smee. Smee's the real uh, hero out of all of this. Now, you may be wondering, Wretch, why are you having your rogue go up to the top of this building? Well, we don't have flying yet, so it's always nice to explore, but what I'm really curious about is that area right here. This, um, in the original Dalaran in Northrend, that was the Purple Parlor. It had uh, some interesting stuff up there, and you could go there via a portal down at the bottom of the Violet Citadel, but that portal isn't there anymore. So I'm kind of curious what is up there. Now, there is no way, I think, I could make it there. Like, there's just, there's just no way. Ugh. Oh. Well then. Maybe. There's two of them. There's two balcony areas. That's new. Hmm. And this right here is probably as high as we're possibly going to get in our attempt. Um, let me wait for my grappling hook and see if I can make it to the top of the spire like I did down there. And I guess this is just something to do while we're queued up for a dungeon. This may be a long episode today. Whoop! Okay. Now, I'm really curious what I could do here. Um, this is some rogue parkour. We actually may not do the dungeon today and just focus on this kind of a little throwaway episode. Man, that's, that's going to take some crackerjack timing to get up on top of one of these spires. Well, I've already come farther than I already thought I would. Man, I'm really glad I'm not afraid of heights. So, let us go ahead and... Make sure I have the right cloak on this time. I do. And... Oh. Oh. Hey! Oh, it was so close! Oh, we were so close. That's alright, we can climb here just a little bit. We're going to do this, guys. I'm determined. We saw the light at the end of the tunnel, and it was not a train. Maybe I can make it up here and just hang out. Oh, no. I'm going through. That's good to know for future reference. All right. We're going to have to uh, find some backup plan. Hey, that's too far away. Things, have, things have gone askew. Well, let's climb over here. We're flying over Asuna now. Um... Maybe... Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to grapple. 
Yeah, we're way too far down. Okay, well, let's, uh... Woo! Head back to our... Relatively to our starting position. But it was there. It is doable. I think it is doable. You just have to really be on the ball. So, I'm going to go ahead and try and get positioned again. And um, if we queue for the dungeon, awesome. If not, no worries. And um, I'll see you guys whenever I see you. Well, no time for um, urban mountain climbing. In a nice change of pace, it's time for us to actually prevent a jailbreak, instead of actually doing the jailbreaking. Now, in this dungeon, we need to defend the Violet Hold against Legion Incursion. Now, we're going to have a bunch of demons and other unsavory things, good lord, that are going to come out of these portals, and we need to stop them before they break down this door and enter Dalaran proper, because the Legion will have a foothold, and that's game over, man! So the tank and everyone else needs to really be paying attention to what's going on around them. And I believe, yeah, Prison Seal Integrity 100%. Lord Malgeth, he's the one who's opening the portals and breaking out a lot of the uh, denizens. And the denizens are the bosses. Now I don't know if this is on heroic or normal, I queued for either. And someone just threw down a hearthstone, a hearthstone board. It's going to be one of those dungeons, huh? Oh well. Such is life. Now, other demons do come out other than these big baddies, so that's why I have Blade Fury out. Just to do as much damage as possible. Oh my lord, that hurts. The, um... And I activated the Dread Blades accidentally. The healer and tank both need to really be on their toes in this dungeon. Especially on Heroic and Mythic. There's an entire Elite Legion squad. So, let's go ahead and fire the cannons! And try and knock out as much AoE damage as we can. Now the reason that the healer needs to be on their game is because there's a lot of really random uh, damage spikes that can happen in this dungeon just completely out of the blue. Fortunately it looks like all the portals have been over here on this area. Nothing sucks more than having a really close call and then having to heal up and then they open a portal on the other side of the dungeon and you have to kind of hustle. Depending on the difficulty and your gear level, this could this could be a kind of a tense dungeon if you've never done it before. After a while, though, it becomes cake. There's also buttons um, and switches around this dungeon, which are part of the prison defense system, and those can be used to great effect to wipe out mobs or do a lot of damage to bosses. And there's some Cosby dust. Let's try to avoid that. God, I'm really thinking about trying to get up there to that to that parlor now that I know that it can be done. Here's a new portal. Man, this guy's being really generous. So, I don't know about you guys, but I hate wasting my time doing shopping. That's like one of my least favorite things to do. And I went and did I had to go run some errands like early this morning, so I'm dealing with early morning traffic and um, just all the wonderful things that, oh, and school zones and all that, all that jazz. And then after I get done, I'm thinking to myself, well, today's the day the Nintendo Classic, the mini classic console drops. Let's see if I can actually go grab one. And I went to Toys R Us, and there's a line outside. Now, keep in mind, I don't do, like, the Black Friday type of stuff here in the States. That is just... Ugh. That's horrible. And considering everything that's going on in the country right now, with everyone's kind of temper and mentality, I'm actually really worried about this Black Friday. But regardless, um... Nintendo Mini already sold out in my city. I'm thinking. Oh lord. So it was a big waste of time for me to head home and then decide to go back out again and go to Toys R Us. 
trap. Gotcha. Hey there! I was just enjoying a relaxing vacation on the beach when a chilling sense of dread washed over me. Just what are you up to, I wonder? Wait! I recognize that voice. Fly, you fool. Oh, Buttons, what have you done? Hurry, get her back in the cell! Now, this is Maleficent Mana Storm. This is Millhouse Mana Storm, who's a mage that you've met from previous expansions. This is apparently his wife. <laughs> so, we are um, trying to do our best to prevent some sort of unsavoriness from happening to Millhouse. Though I think he kind of deserves it, to be frank. And I'm just going to focus on DPSing. I know there's some other um, aspects here. There's like bombs you have to defuse. And other good stuff, but I just kind of... I'm pretty sure this is normal. Since we're just DPSing down so quickly. She has typical stuff like e exploding uh, bombs and exploding squirrels. Run, Millhouse. Not even my middle name. Hell hath no fury. Then a woman scorned. Thanks a lot. You have no idea what you unleashed upon the world today. Ah, oh, there we go. I was like, we can't open the box. Deluxe slipstream pants. Well, I have better, but they're deluxe. So I guess that's something. But I'm pretty sure that the, uh... Oh! I have to come in here for something. What's this for? Oh, it's for the... It's engineering. Plasmatic laser bolt. It's for the cheating death engineering quest. Cool. Well, that just made our lives a little bit easier. Obviously, the Nintendo Classic is going to be the hot item this Christmas. And the thing about it is, is I'm not even trying to get it for me. I'm trying to get it for my nephews who love retro gaming, which is awesome considering the fact that they're not they are not even teenagers yet, but they love to play old video games. It gives me hope for the future. But hopefully Amazon will have something or I can grab it online at a relatively decent price. That's the key. But I guess we'll uh, try our best. That Warlock's rocking out some awesome gear. Where's our tank? There we go. Everything is going pretty well. I have to think. This is one of those dungeons that after a while, once you get used to it, and this, this dungeon was around during Wrath of the Lich King as well. It was one of the big Wrath of the Lich King dungeons. Um, it kind of com becomes second nature to do this. There's always usually... I like it when expansions have dungeons like this, which are gauntlets that you have to try and survive. The first one I ever played was Black Morass in the Caverns of Time in uh, Burning Crusade, and that was probably my favorite dungeon in the entire expansion. It just really separated the men from the boys and the girls from the ladies when it came to, like, going through those gauntlets, depending on your gear level and such. Had a lot of fun. Still haven't done anything in Karazan yet. Some of my friends are still waiting to get attuned. But once that happens, because um, that's the entire reason I bought this expansion and came back to WoW was because of the return to Karazan. So hopefully I'll get to play that soon on my main. Here's another squad. We're definitely seeing Swindle do more damage and have more survivability since the gear has gotten better. Just rocking out those world quests. So maybe Outlaw's not as bad. It's just probably one of the most gear-dependent specs that I've seen. But if you get good gear, it is everything is uh, Songbird. Where are we heading to next? Stealth for the win. As a DPS, you need to make sure not to kind of jump the gun there. Because 
you're not tanking. So unless the tank gets to the portal, it's best to kind of just hang out and see what happens. Oy, I hate fighting on stairs. Now we're getting close to our next boss. There's three uh, There's three bosses per... Oh. Fallen Blue Dragon, once known as Eldragosa. She will be perfect for terrorizing the skies of Dalaran. Speaking of Wrath of the Lich King, time to deal with a undead dragon. There's eight bosses in here total, but you only deal with three um, per, per run. So it's always kind of a random luck of the draw what, what uh, bosses you actually get. Which is cool, it gives it a little bit of variety. Now I'm not sure... Oh, I assume we get out of the stupid. That's probably a really good determination. And since we are fighting against a dragon, let's make sure that we fight her at the sides. So there's no tail whip or anything like that. And looks like we're fighting... Is that a death knight? Oh no, that's an arms warrior. Neat. So far so good. And, oh, okay, Ice Bomb, I don't know, let's Cloak of Shadows. Woo! Oh, Lord. Okay, we gotta free, free people from the bombs. They get frozen in place and life becomes unpleasant. Ow, 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 ow. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. He was right in the way of a breath weapon. There was nothing we could do. Rest in peace, dear warrior. And... Actually, the, actually we only encounter two... Two of the inmates over the course of the uh, dungeon. Because then you actually have to fight the warlock who's trying to break them all out and like another demon, I think. Fortunately, you get a little bit of breathing room every time you beat a boss, so then you can heal up and mana up and take care of all those that important stuff. Get back to Blade Flurry. Who is healing us, actually? I guess the Paladin? Oh yeah, that's right. The, the Resto Paladin, they have a hammer for their... a two-handed hammer for their uh, artifact. That's weird. They always normally carried shields and one-handers back in the day. Oh well. Oh, she's AoEing. Or she's actually attacking. So I guess are Restos kind of like discipline priests now? Where they have to DPS in order to heal? That's kind of cool. I like that. It makes sense. Paladins just shouldn't sit back and just heal. We leave that to the priests and the shaman and druids and such. Paladins need to be like out up there in the fight. Invasion commander defeated. Yeah, so we are near the end of this. Actually, all of this is uh, this one quest. We need to defeat the third... The third prisoner... Oh, maybe they do break out one more. For that quest, and then... I need to make two failure detection pylons. Which are these awesome engineering toys that actually can res a party. In the event of, uh... <laughs> death. Which is pretty handy. There's a lot of utility. Ooh. So we're getting to some of the nastier squads. Some of these guys do a lot of damage. Looks like we cleave through them pretty quickly, though. Oh! Someone used... That's what happened. Someone used the prison defenses. Gave us a little bit of breathing room. That's cool.
Yeah, so much more damage. Oh, I love it. Our energy regeneration is still crap, but thanks to that talent, it's a lot better than what it would be otherwise. There we go. Now we're fighting Lord Malgith himself. Let's go ahead and get our slice and dice going. And interrupt his Shadow Bolt Valley. Or Volley. <laughs> Shadow Bolt Valley. Sounds like a kid show for the Burning Legion. Well, we're doing pretty good. Just have to avoid any badness. Owie! I said avoid badness. I don't know if someone has a bomb or... Ooh, there we are. I will not see the world. <sighs> Even the best laid plans... Fell Lord Betrug. Now, this is the invasion commander. This is the actual... This is the big bada. Now, what he does, if memory serves, is he will uh, try and sacrifice. We need to stay out of the way of that slash. He'll try and sacrifice someone randomly. What the? Oh, I've got Seed of Corruption. That does an AoE to everyone in the area, so you just try and stay out of it. Owie! I got slashed. Owie? There we go. Astronomics from their bonds before they're executed. So, here are the bonds. We just right click like so. And go back to focusing. And that's pretty much the fight. That warlock got Seed of Corruption. How the tables have turned. That's normally a warlock spell. And you just try to avoid those, those purple waves that were coming through. Oh, this was heroic. Excellent. Blood of Sargeras, Victory, Spalders of Tent Sinew, Heroic Titan Forged, oh. and Schematic the Felic, Fell Artifact. Huh. Neat. Well then, that worked out pretty well for us. Let's go ahead and leave the instance group. And if memory serves, we should be in a very perilous position where the dungeon actually started. I should be back where we originally... Yep, on the Tall Spire in Dalaran. Uh, let's take a look at our stuff here. Now we can make a fell artifact for weapons, however the highest it goes is 805, unfortunately, so it's kind of useless to people in, uh, in more advanced. The gear in this expansion that you can make with the crafting professions, it's not that good. And we got the Spalders of Tent Sinew, which are a thing, but we've got much better. We're already rocking 855s. So let's use these Jewels of Victory. And we can sell the Slipstream Pants as well. And... So I'm gonna, I need any little boost I can get, so let's go into the Toy Box, and there should be that awesome thing that I showed you guys that got nerfed the day where you could actually uh, shoot yourself up into the air. So we're going to use this and then the Emerald Winds. And we're just gonna... Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe. Ah. Nope. Not good. Couldn't find any place to actually put the, uh, put the hook. And... Oh, no. Disaster. It doesn't look like we can actually stand on any of these spires. Either, except for that one on top of Cadgar's tower. Can we land on top of this? Without getting teleported out? It's technically... Well, I just got my answer. Crap. 
I flew over the Alliance District, and back in the day, you could sneak into the Alliance areas, but now it's pretty much if you are a Horde character, and you are anywhere in that territory, apparently, even up in the air, you get teleported out here. So, that sucks. But at least we got the Violet Hold um, dealt with. Let's go ahead before we finish this episode. And we need two failure detection pylons. And just to show you guys what these are, I've got the three star version of them. Um, place an electrical pylon on the ground that will resurrect all party or raid members within five yards after combat has ended. So, it basically, anyone who who died a horrible death, like Shadow Priest, for example, in a boss fight, you can res them, as long as they're kind of bunched up together. And what do we need to make those? Do 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 do. Chaos Blasters. Three Chaos Blasters. Don't waste my time. So, six Chaos Blasters, because we need to make two. Two, three, four, five, six. That gets a bit pricey. Fortunately, we have some gear to sell for profit. Move it. And that's going to pump up our engineering a little bit, so... Can't be all bad. Hmm, interesting. Just rip the bolt off one of the prison cells. I'm sure whatever's inside has long since died. Failure detection, plasmatic laser bolt that we got from Mana Storms. Dee Dee takes the pylons and begins tinkering with them and starts writing some notes. Yeah, it should do the trick. One new and improved Reaver's module schematic for you, Swindle Gear. Failure detection mode. Oh, cool, we got something for Reeves. What is that? Failure detection. Enter. Teaches Reeves how to enter mailbox mode. Alright, I don't know what surface to infernal rocket launchers have to do with a mailbox, but I'm intrigued. But I think that's going to do it for today, guys. We actually prevented a prison breakout instead of, uh, participated in one. And now we just have the Shade of Xavius inside Darkheart Thicket to deal with, and we need to go talk to Light's Heart. So I think we'll go speak to Light's Heart in the uh, next episode on Sunday, I believe. And then we'll go do um, Dark Heart Ticket. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.